tells me we are. All right. So we're glad to be back in our Sunday night service. Good to have all of you with us today. We're kind of scattered out a little bit. And uh, amen. I don't I don't believe none of them germs could get close enough to either one of y'all here tonight. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry, Liz. That germ's already sitting by you. But that's all right. That's all right. You're immune to that, ain't you? Uh, uh, yeah. Trail, what are you laughing at back there, son? You got the same problem, huh? All right. Okay. Well, it's, <laughs> uh, I would say something about Al, but Charlotte said he don't even make a good germ. I don't know. <laughs> but he's contagious, I'll tell you. Uh, don't you hate to look at old pictures? I, not old pictures of other people. I, I hate to look at old pictures of me. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm being young and skinny and all that stuff and well, what really gave me a surprise when I looked at an old picture of Al, I thought, hey, he's they done pretty good back then. But my God, he's like me. He's fell apart now. Amen. They're going to come up with some super glue, they say, to put us back together. Maybe they will. Good to be in the Lord's house. There's a, the funeral's going on there. It may be over now, but um, that car ran for uh, the Scott family. They, there was a lot of cars gathered, so they need your prayers. And, Pray for the others that uh, have lost their loved ones and the children that suffer. And most of all, pray for the lost. Pray for the needs this morning and uh, uh, that God would continue to touch and, and reach out there. And uh, so we just pray that the Lord will bless you. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. It's good to have everybody here tonight. And we do thank the Lord for all he's done. I'm going to ask you, Brother David, if you would lead us in prayer today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for being in your house, God. We just thank you and praise you for allowing us to come together and yes. fellowship and worship. God, we ask you to be with Pastor tonight. Thank you, thank you Jesus. The message we need to hear, but it was a song of service. And just bless each and every one present here tonight, Lord, and those that couldn't be here, Lord. Yes, we God. And we just praise and honor you for all you do for us. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. 92. <laughs> I, I got that was right in hell. Uh, I'm pretty hoarse tonight. Unless y'all want to read it high. I'm going to read it high. Uh, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. I did live like from hell until I soul.
glass. You gonna play a song? Here he comes. Oh, all right. Is that up? Did Trail have his hand up to sing? He did. He did. Have you got a bar of harmonica? Or are you just gonna sing? Last time he sang, they said the Sahara Desert came in. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> 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 You got one? All right. Okay. Let's give him one here. I think this is going to be it. But now, uh, PA? Huh? Mine, he said. Mine, mine. Oh, you're going my harmonica. Good. Sure did save me having to haul them off. That's the only way I know for them to make them want to carry out the garbage is let them think they're getting something that you really didn't want them to get. It's a good thing you know they all Hey Amen. Don't stuff. bring none of it back to me. Uh, Next time he says, hey, if you got that gun of mine or you, you still got that guitar of mine, no. no, you threw that away. I don't think you got none of that no more. Uh, I let him carry an old shotgun that I, I had. I got from when I was a kid, and old Judd had. Would y'all remember Judd? And uh, I bought a gun from him. I had a pilot choke, and not as good as you could set a gallon milk jug up in the back of the church and couldn't hit it. I thought the barrel was uh, uh, warped, and so I traded for an old shotgun. It's just the only word that's got on it is Exel. And uh, years ago, they'd been out of business oh, way over 50 years. And I've been using that thing at night, and uh, that thing's kicked so hard. Two times I've shot it, it, it kicked the, uh, the the choke, I mean the, the hand rest. The gun kicked, and there I was holding the rest in my hand. I decided, and bruised my hand, I said, bless God, I'm not shooting that no more. And 
So uh, if he really wants that, he can carry it over there. Amen. All right, no one? Y'all guys ready? Come on around. Well, no, she's getting ready. You wouldn't be playing around. That's a habit. When you handicap, you just put it where you can park it. All right, pray for a day. Try this new song. It's a uh, see. It's a uh, brand new one that we that I wrote a while back. And I hadn't really played it that much, but we'll try to do it. six verses here. So bless you, brother. Try to do it. When Jesus steps out on his cloud of glory, I'm leaving.
first time. <laughs> I was right. getting ready for another first time. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick, believe it or not. <laughs> All right, kid B.
probably should turn you away Sometimes we get discouraged As we walk this weary way But Jesus said he'd every burden bear So take him all your trouble When it seems all hope is gone Trust Him when you go to Him in prayer And don't overlook salvation While living here in sin Someday it may be too late Pray Someday when you need Him He may not let you choices of education. You've seen what education is doing as you see in the streets. These people uh, uh, riding and cause so much trouble. A big majority of them were a bunch of educated idiots uh, that were educated in the college systems. And, uh, and you see how far that's got you. How much better would it have been? Some of them were, but most of the majority. How much better would it have been if the parents would make sure and got them in the church, make sure who they was running around with when they were little. Some cases they turn headlong, sometimes that's not the case. But there's a big majority of people out there that know nothing of God and hate Him. And because they hate Him, they hate you because you love Him. And it's getting worse and worse as we're going through life. People are turning their back on God, left and right. This song right here is called, I'm a Jesus Fan. And I am. I am. I thank God that I have parents that raised me up to know Him. And like I said, there's been a lot of good parents that's had a lot of bad children. You know, there's a difference between a prodigal son and a child that never knew God. A prodigal is somebody that comes back home. Uh, the one that never knew him never was there to start with. You, you know, there's a lot to think about that. Well, I was driving home one Friday with motion on my ear. In the middle of the crowd was gathered I hear them yelling cheers And my heart here inside me I asked a certain man He said there ain't no better reason I'm a good moment So we drove the little fucker And I saw another crowd They were dancing, they were swinging Her music played loud
Miss Connie asked for this song. We'll see if we can do it. Um, I promise I ain't contagious. I, so, do any of y'all ever get a scent in you uh, and smell it and make you start coughing? I did that earlier today, and I've not been able to get it out of my throat. The smell, of, uh, it was a certain type of cologne somewhere, and I've not been able to get it out of my throat, that smell of it. But, you know, I'm so glad that God's prepared a place for us. No, we can get right.
Jacob, you gonna sing your song? I take that as a no. He said so. Not the song you want, we're going to sing, uh, God's Not Dead, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. E. I run through his song again tonight. Maybe I'll get it, get it, get it down pat, but in the next 20 years, it'll probably be out long before he comes back up here to see us. Amen. Uh, he was, was sat on the porch, and he said, I wish we had a front porch down there. I said, well, you might inherit this and when, when I die. And your, mom, your nana's dead. He said, I can't pay your bills. I said, we won't have none. We'll be dead. <laughs> you know? Thank you. 
I said, stand up. If you love Jesus, stand up. I did Stand up. And tell us all about it. Stand up. And testify. song he sang it again tonight for us about uh, being weighed in the balance and found wanting and he sung just a, a, a few uh, services back and God uh, brought me back to this scripture concerning that song in Daniel chapter 5 we'll read the first six verses and then try to speak to you just a little bit tonight the Bible says Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. That the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem and the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines drank therein. They drank wine and they praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour, now notice this, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against a candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosened and his knees smote one against another. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for letting us come tonight. Father, thank you for the songs that have been sung and for the, the enthusiasm of the congregation that has gathered here tonight. Father, may our hearts be poured out to you in worship. Lord, we ask only that we be found in the center of thy will. And God, that we might preach in your power. God, it doesn't mean we have to be in a big way of preaching, but just be led by your spirit here tonight. And Father, let everything we do bring glory to your name. Again, we pray for the sick. We pray for the afflicted. We pray for these that are bereaved. We pray for the children and the grown-ups alike. Most of all, wherever that soul is, it's lost. 
We pray that they might be saved. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, out of reading those six verses, the very thing that sticks out is the handwriting on the wall. Now, a friend of mine, I, I don't know how much we'll get into today, but the handwriting on the wall, a friend of mine, goes a whole lot further than just the walls of Belshazzar's palace. He goes a whole lot further. It means a whole lot more. This whole chapter that I've read, a friend of mine, or part that I've read, it centers around this mysterious writing that appeared upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. It, it was inscribed, the Bible teaches, by the fingers of a man's hand. And that was all that was seen. Amen. Now, I don't know about y'all, but friend of mine, if, if we was here tonight and the hand of God uh, showed up and began to write on that wall, I believe it would get our attention, don't you? Amen. 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 I believe it would. It made an impression that was well, sure, friend of mine, it brought forth the fear, and I believe it would us. And it brought forth the concern uh, concerning the interpretation that they wanted to know. I, I believe tonight that I can say this, that 99.9% .9 of all of those drunkards had a miraculous wake up, don't you? Sober up. But I want to tell you that the handwriting on the wall wasn't sent. There's no remedy for drunkenness. Amen. It was sent with a purpose directed to the heart of Belshazzar. Friend of mine, at least today those around Belshazzar, because uh, I believe that they saw the effect that it had on him. I, Belshazzar had a feeling in his heart that that message was sent for him. We always know when God sends a message straight to us. There's no doubt about it. We don't have to argue. God lets us know. Belshazzar come to an understanding that that message on the wall was sent to him. Amen. As I said, it wasn't uh, in, inscribed as a remedy for drunkenness. It was much more serious than that. Melchizedek's actions by defiling the holy vessels of Nebuchadnezzar and brought out of the temple of Jerusalem, mocking the living God by idolatrous worship, drinking, it caused God to pronounce an end to the kingdom of Babylon under Belshazzar's rule. Friend of mine, you see, God does get enough. A lot of people today think God will just go on and on and on, and you can treat God just any way. But God does get enough. And when God gets enough, He is God enough to reveal that and bring to mind to bring His wrath and His judgment upon that heart that has done in such an ungodly and a wretched way. Friend of mine, these were holy vessels being used in the temple to offer praise unto God, the God, Almighty God. And now they chose to defile these temples with idolatrous worship. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar was not his father. He called him father, but they called him fathers based on their position. Nebuchadnezzar was actually his grandfather. His father was uh, uh, Nabonus, uh, or Na Nabonus, N-A-B-O-N-I-D-U-S, call it what you want. I don't know why they named them people that, y'all. Amen. I believe instead of Nabonus, I'd just say no bone on us. Uh -huh. Amen. But that was his father. And most likely he married uh, Nebuchadnezzar's daughter. And Nebuchadnezzar, a friend, when you study, died in 562 B.C. And in the period of six years, there was three kings that was assassinated, a friend of mine, during that time. When they wanted to get rid of somebody, they just killed him. Amen. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a more of a skeptic. He stayed on the throne a lot longer. Amen. Hey, they, they slipped poison in their drink. That's why they had a cup buyer. And they'd make the cup buyer drink first. If he didn't die, it's all right for them to eat, right? Amen. Hey, uh, they, they, they were, hey uh, that was the way they were. Uh, they know how to rub you out if you rub them wrong. Amen. Right? Rub you out. 
Friend of mine, of their own servant, their own family. There have been kings that their own family killed them. Isn't that something today? Assassination. This chapter is uh, about Nebuchadnezzar and his neglect, neglect to learn of all the things that had happened to, uh, to Nebuchadnezzar uh, to humble him and show him that the God of heaven was in control of all things. You remember that he lost his mind and, and he, they, they sent him out and uh, he, he become like a wild animal. His fingernails grew like bird claws, his hair like bird feathers. And, uh, uh, he just eat hay like an oxen. He was deranged. He, he was completely insane. And God left him out there. I believe it was seven years. And, and he left him there till he come to his senses and realized there is a God in heaven. Uh, there is a God that's greater than you. There is a God that has more power than you. And you're only on your throne because of him. Uh, and when God, when Nebuchadnezzar came to that understanding, they come and got him, put him back on his throne. Uh, and he wrote a chapter concerning how God had humbled his heart but his grandson didn't learn from his mistakes. Amen. How people today are failing to learn from others' mistakes today. Friend, listen, they knew that the Medes and the Persians were just outside the city. They, they'd already fought the battle and they lost. So they went back inside the city for the protection of of the city. It was fortified. Uh, one writer wrote that uh, they had enough inside the city to last 20 years. They didn't have nothing to worry about. So what did they do? They decided to get drunk. Ain't that the way of the world? Let's just party. Amen. But what he didn't know was that uh, a friend of mine, Darius, was coming in from underneath the, the city. Friend of mine, in the midst of their vibrations, God had sent a message to the king, the handwriting on the wall. I believe today that there's been many people that God has sent the message, a handwriting on the wall. I believe there's people in the graveyard today that fail to understand what God wanted them to know. Rebellion and rejection, hard-heartedness, self-justification are just a few of the tools that the devil uses to make people ignore the message God wants them to hear tonight. God sent a message, a handwriting on the wall. Hey, it was only four words. Four words that would change history. It's not always the length of the message, but it's the purpose of it and the power of the sender to fulfill the message. Amen. The greatest message is God is love. Amen. That's just three words. But the more you think about it, the more excited your heart gets when you realize that the God that is love loves you. Amen. Amen. Four little words, friend of mine, was all it was. The phrase, friend of mine, the handwriting on the wall had, had been used, a uh, 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 friend of mine, had been used over and over again. How many times have you heard that say, well, that's the handwriting on the wall? As far as I'm concerned, especially when you get mad at somebody, right? How they, they come at you on their corner and you say, wait a minute, that's the handwriting on the wall. What did that mean to you, friend? It meant that enough is enough. If I ever tell you that what you're doing to me is the handwriting on the wall, I'm telling you, you better back up. Amen. Enough, enough. And that's what God was telling uh, Belshazzar. Friend of mine, that he wasn't going to tolerate any more of his ungodliness. Belshazzar was aware of the fact that God knew what he was doing. You know, we're living in a world where people don't think God knows what they're doing. God hadn't forgot your name. God hadn't forgot you in any way whatsoever today. God sends his word to lead us and to guide us and to show us the way that we need to go tonight. Friend of mine, he realized that these four little words wasn't going to do me anything good. Isn't it amazing? He was afraid. 
Would you not have been afraid? Part of the words on the wall. And in his heart he knew it was for him. His countenance changed. His joy left him. The gaiety that the wine had brought was gone. His thoughts began to trouble him. With the great enemy on the outside of the wall, yet four little words brought forth more worry to him than the Medes and the Persians that was on the outside of the wall. Why? Because God was speaking. Four little words brought more fear to him than that host of army that was trying to besiege his land. Why? God sent him a message. He knew that he sinned against God. Listen, friend of mine, when God wants you to know something, there won't be no question in your heart about it tonight. He knew that he'd done wrong. But what he didn't know, there was no backing up. Outside today, when people come to the place in their life, that there, there's no backing up. There's no room for, to turn around. They've gone too far in the wrong direction. Belshazzar had gone too far in the wrong direction. He mocked God. And for taking wine and defiling the vessels, the, the holy vessels, he was mocking God. He was asking God to prove who he was. And brother, God not only proved it, he wrote it on the wall. He wrote it on the wall. Sad thing was, there wasn't nobody there who could interpret it for him. He called all of his wise men, but they couldn't interpret it there today. They just couldn't understand the meaning. Maybe they were a little more cautious because they realized the seriousness of this. And the Bible said that the queen mother came and told Belshazzar about Daniel, how he'd interpret dreams for her father and that the spirit of the living God was in him. Daniel was about 80 years old. Amen. This was just before they threw him in the den of lions. He was over 80 years old when they threw him in the den of lions. So many people today think Daniel jumped up on the wall and run circles around the wall all night or wrestled the line. And uh, friend, there wasn't just one line. They could have been as many as 200 lines in that den. Daniel was over 80 years old. Daniel couldn't do nothing but trust in God. Amen. Trust in God. He was 80 years old at this time. Uh, maybe he retired. I don't know. Maybe he'd been forgotten about. But God was letting them know that Daniel's work wasn't true. In the second chapter of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream and, and it caused him great grief. And, and because and no one could interpret it, he was going to kill them all. All the wise men. He's just going to kill them. You tell me you're, you're a wise man. You tell me you got wisdom. You tell me you can understand anything. Tell me this dream, amen. And because they couldn't, he'd just go and kill them. One thing he said about Nebuchadnezzar, he had a way of cleaning out the barn. Didn't he? I believe Ross Perot might have took a little from him. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God, they prayed and God gave Daniel the interpretation. And I want you to notice this ties in. What Daniel revealed then was coming to pass now as he stood before Belshazzar. It was coming to pass. The great image that Nebuchadnezzar saw uh, was God's message of how the kingdom would fall and, and who would be successors. The head was of gold and that was the Babylon the empire and, and the breast and the arm were silver and that was the Medes and the Persians. And when you study the dream and Daniel's interpretation all the way down to the feet that was part iron and part clay, it came to pass just as he said, God makes no mistake. States. Amen. Every kingdom fulfilled their position just as God had shown in the vision there to Nebuchadnezzar. In this fifth chapter, a change was about to take place. The Babylonian kingdom was going to fall. That was a great kingdom. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar had built himself up to where, friend of mine, he decided who lived or died. 
He decided who uh, what who fell or, or who flourished. It, it was all up to him. But friend of mine, sin has a way of destroying you to the very lowest of degree. The kingdom was going to fall. Belshazzar, the Bible says, as David sang, was weighed in the balance and found mourning. Sometimes, have you ever felt that way? You get so down and out, you get so, friend of mine, sometimes far away from God. And it's just like you're weighed in the balance and you found mourning. Nebuchadnezzar had nothing to offer God. He had no excuse. He had nothing. What God was revealing to him, he did. God wasn't making it up as he was going along. God was showing him what he was seeing today. His kingdom was going to fall. He had crossed the line, you might say. It was over for him and the empire that was so great that it had been reared up by his grandfather, a friend of mine, was going to be demolished. Gone. Do you see how quickly sin can do the things that it's done? Look at, look at what's going on around the world. Look how quickly things tumble. There's a domino effect all over the world today. Amen. Sin, friend of mine, once it begins to rage and, and it begins to grow stronger and stronger and stronger, it begins to destroy in a wider pattern. From one thing to another, amen. When they got all the tater chips they want, they wanted Wendy hamburgers. When they got all the hamburger they wanted, they wanted booze. When they got all the booze they wanted, wanted Rolex watches. Amen. I'm just using that as an illustration, although that is true. You see, sin, friend of mine, uh, it makes your, your flesh hunger. It don't never satisfy you. There's no satisfying the flesh today unless it knows the Lord. Sin drives you. Sin will take over your thoughts. Sin will brainwash you if you got a brain. Amen. It'll harden your heart to work. You have no feelings today. And you're driven by the devil. That's what sin does. Amen. Can you imagine? I, I, I can imagine Darius and all of his people might have sipped lightly that first sip as they put that wine in the holy vessels. But the more they begin to drink, the better they begin to feel about it. You see, the devil was having himself a party. He, he was watching as the vessels of God, the anointed vessels of God, was being used to worship idols, things that he had put into the minds and the hearts of the people. Satan loves it today when, when, where, when we get out of God's order and we begin to be used for his things today. Amen. Somebody said, it'll never happen to me. Oh, it probably already has. Amen. The devil instigates sin, but we're the sinners. We, we commit the sin. Amen. The devil don't make you do nothing. It's too easy to put the blame on the devil. Ain't it? Oh, it's so easy. The devil made me do it. If it wasn't for that devil, all the devil done was put it in your mind. He didn't make your hands or your mouth or any part of you do anything. That was your choice today. He didn't make them get drunk. That was their choice. Can you imagine that as, as they began to, to feel the effect of wine? And, and let me tell you something, friend of mine. Wine, the Bible says, is raging and, and, and it causes things in your heart and your mind that you shouldn't do. When the Bible says, be you sober-minded, friend of mine, that's the talk I'm talking about. I'm being able to think clearly and make intelligent decisions. But anything that takes away that power from you has to be wrong. Wrong today. Can you imagine as the devil watched them and he saw how they began to, to be overtaken by the wine? 
how he began to whisper in their ears, why don't you go get them vessels? Why don't you go get them silver vessels? Why don't you go get them golden vessels? And why don't you give praise to this God of yours? Amen. It's because of him that you have them in your palace. Go get them and, and praise these gods of wood and stone. Gold or silver, whatever they're made out of. Praise them. Can you imagine the smile on the devil's face as Belshazzar gave orders to go get those vessels? Amen. If I'd been one of them that went and got them when I saw the handwriting on the wall, I'd have been worried. Wouldn't you? They were overtaken by this wine and he crossed the line. Darius had cut off the water supply from the Euphrates River, if you study that, and he was entering the city by the water ducks. Coming in from the water ducks. He wasn't having to climb over the walls. The devil had already made him a door. Darius opened the door. They wasn't even a fight, David. They were all drunk. When they come into the city, there wasn't no battle. They was all drunk. So they took the city just that easy. Just that easy. Once the devil gets you giving in, it ain't very hard for him to take over, is it? The devil will take over your home. He'll take over your church. He'll take over your city. He'll take over your, na your nation if you let him here tonight. But the one thing that's most dangerous, he'll take over your life. Are you listening to me? He'll take over your life. Amen. He makes all this sin look so good. I've said it before. All of these commercials about alcohol shows young people, friend of mine, a slender people, joyful people, laughing and having a good time. They don't go to the hospital and show where these are suffering with cirrhosis of the liver. They don't show these that their mind is burned up. I got called to a man and said that he's dying. We want you to pray for him. He was an alcoholic. He had the mind of a six-year-old. He did did not know anything. It was too late. Why in God's name don't they show that? Amen. That's the head right on the wall. That's what we need to be seeing. Ain't that something? If you go down the freeways, all the signs of ungodliness. Ungodliness. But yeah, who's going to fight? Amen. Who's going to stand up for what's right today? God sent a handwriting on the wall. A message from God directed to the one that transgressed against him. You see, the king had the power. It was up to the king whether they did this thing tonight. Amen. I've often said just out of joking, uh, God, I don't want to be standing next to a hypocrite in a lightning storm because I don't want you to strike them and maybe flash over on me. Have you ever kind of said that? But you don't really have to worry. God always hits his target. God always gets his heart or his person. And God sent a message to the one that transgressed it was clear, it was to the point, and it gave no room for change today. I don't know whether you understand this or not, but when God sends forth doom, that's a serious matter. When God sends forth doom, when God says it's over, it's over. When God gave the world 120 years as Noah was building the ark. I, I believe that's exactly what he gave. I don't believe he gave them a year, a year 
more took a year away. God sent forth his word. God sent forth doom. You and I today, or, or as I was preaching this morning, are looking for the rapture of the Lord to come. But behind the rapture is doom. Tribulation. Not just tribulation, great tribulation. There's a difference between tribulation and great tribulation. A time like has never been and will never be before. The whole world's going to be turned upside down. You're listening. God's going to send forth the handwriting on the wall. The Antichrist is going to come. Amen. They already want us to be a cashless nation. They don't want you to have no money. Why? Because they want to control what you buy. They want to be able to say when you put that card up there to be scanned whether or not they think you need what you're buying. Amen. You can kiss your guns goodbye. You can kiss your ammunition goodbye. Because they ain't going to let you have none. Yeah, I said that to you two out there. Amen. I'm not telling you the truth. We're just numbers and we don't even know it. We are nothing more than a number packed in a computer base and they know everything about us by our number. You remember, David, when we were we, growing up, we first got married and, uh, and you wanted to buy a car or you wanted to buy a house. Amen. It took weeks for them to run a credit reference. Fifteen minutes, they can tell you every time you didn't pay your light bill. Amen. Right? We're a number now. And because we're a number, that's the reason the conscience of our world has gone. We're not treated as people anymore. We're a number Amen. Amen. They don't want us to retire and draw Social Security because they done spin it. Amen. When we get so old that we're no longer tax worthy, we become a tax burden. Amen. Praise the Lord. If they ever find me half dead on the side of the road and take my driving license and get my blood type and find out I got one part of me that's worth saving and they give it to one of them idiots and you know who I'm talking about, I hope I come back and pull every hair in their head out. <laughs> they know all about me today. They know every time I've been to the doctor, they know every medicine that I'm taking. They know every part about me that's good. Amen. Every part that's bad. Ain't that something? And you say, well, they're smart. Well, they ain't too smart. God, he's not working on no computer, but he's, the Bible says he knows every hair on our head. Amen. Right? He knows every hair on our head. God has sent a handwriting on the wall unto the whole world, but the whole world has turned their back on what God is saying. Amen. The whole world. It was over for Belshazzar. When he interpreted the writing, we don't find anything recorded where Belshazzar tried to rebuke the words that Daniel spoke. He knew. He knew it was the truth. There is no rebuke in the truth, only repentance. When God says you're wrong, you're wrong. Amen. There's nothing else you can say about it. Here tonight, amen. I believe he knew in his own heart. He messed up. Messed up. Consider for a moment. We have the word of God and it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Who is God? How, how many of y'all believe the Holy Ghost is God? Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, I only believe in one God. Well, you got to believe in God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, or you ain't believing in a complete God. Are you listen to me today? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is God. Amen. Amen. And I want you to notice, friend, we have the word that's inspired by the Spirit who is God, that when it was spoken, friend of mine, to our heart, which is our soul, the heart of man is not this thing here. The heart of mankind is our soul. And when the word of God is spoken to our soul, 
that's created in the image of the Almighty God, the spirit man, the part within us, friend of mine, we may not want to confess it, but there ain't no doubt that when God speaks to us with a voice uh, that he speaks in, it is certain today. Our soul knows when God is talking Amen. to us Amen. here today. Are you listening to me? We know when God is talking to us here today. Amen. Our soul will tell us today. I believe that it's revealed unto us Friend of mine, by the word of God, that when we're found in the wrong, sometimes it makes us afraid. Have you ever been with unconfessing in your life? Have you ever? I mean, uh, don't you get a little nervous when you know you've done wrong and, and you don't feel any peace inside you? You don't feel any fellowship. Have you ever been, friend of mine, where you didn't have fellowship with God? Sure you have. There's fear. I've been there. I've been to where I felt like God had left me. The most loneliest feeling in the world is when you feel like God is no longer with you. Amen. Amen. And when you pray, but nothing happens. Have you ever prayed out of a fearful heart knowing that something was wrong but you just could not get through to God? Amen. I prayed in the, every room in the trailer. We lived in the trailer then. And I couldn't find no peace. And I was scared. And when I went out in the yard and fell face down on the ground and I told God this is all I am, the dust of the earth and how sorry I was and asked Him to forgive me, when God let His presence be felt in my heart, friend of mine, it brought joy unspeakable and full of glory. I have never forgot what it was like to be lonely. I've never forgot what it felt like to have His touch back in my life. Thank God for grace and mercy. Amen here tonight. handwriting on the wall is serious. It was for Belshazzar and so it is for you and me here today. Amen. Listen to me. I believe it's a fearful thing the Bible says to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. He's not a God. He's the God. Are you listening to me? He's not a God. There's many gods. But he's the God. The God. It's a fearful thing, the Bible says. We know in our hearts that this is the truth, and we realize that there's a penalty for our sin. And God chastises us here today. You must understand that there's a penalty for sin. With every action, there's a reaction. For every action, there's a consequence. For every sin, there is a penalty. And the longer we go with unconfessed sin in our life, the greater our chastisement. The Bible even teaches us today, friend, that if we reject God and we keep going on and on and on, that God will turn our flesh over to the devil that the soul might be saved. The God will let the devil do what he wants to with that flesh, but he won't let him have his soul, but he'll let him bring heartache and trouble and punishment that you might look up and get right with God. Amen. Why does God do that? Because he loves you. And he wants you to turn around. Amen. The flesh is not great, God's greatest interest tonight. Amen. The flesh was just made out of the dust of the ground. God's greatest interest today was made in his image. That's your soul. Are you listening to me? Amen. When Jesus came into this world, uh, healing people, friend of mine, was just uh, the benefit of who he was. But his real purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost, that we could be saved and have our, our heart washed white as snow today. 
Amen. I believe, I believe God heals. I do. But God's greatest interest is in that soul. You hear what I'm saying today? Amen. Can God heal you? Sure he can. He's healing people every day. But what God really wants to do is save people. Give them life everlasting. I better hurry on. I think we can confess today that when the finger of God points in our direction, when we're found at odds with God and walking in the pathway of transgression, that it's a fearful thing in our lives. Amen. You may have never experienced some of the things I have. I pray you haven't. I pray you haven't. But if you ever do, you'll not forget them. Amen. You won't forget your, your confrontation with the devil. You won't forget your confrontation with, with the demons and all of the things that are out there that come against you. You won't forget that. You say, oh, oh that's not real. Eh? You just ain't been there yet. Only by God's power today can we overcome. I love the Lord and I know he loves me, but friend of mine, listen. Only one that's really spiritually naive would not fear him. I fear him for what he can do, don't you? I love him. Somebody said, well, perfect love casteth out all fear. A friend of mine, I don't fear the fact that he's my redeemer. I don't fear the fact that he's going to come and receive me. But I know what the hand of God can do in my life. And it would take an income boot not to fear God. Right? Amen. These dummies that run out on the golf course and hold up a, 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 an iron and, and ask God to strike it. How stupid is that? No huh? Amen. Run out with an umbrella and, and, and ask God to show that he's God. I'll tell you what was wrong with them when they were coming down the, uh, the line probably being made and, and they said brains. He thought they said rain and got an umbrella. Because he surely ain't got no sense. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to try to tempt God. Sometimes in the life I live, we do tempt God. We all do tempt God. But I'm not going to try to go out there and deliberately do that foolish stuff for you. I'm not going to jump off a building just to see if, if weevils really wobble and don't fall down. Are you? I'm not going to do that. I had enough of that stuff growing up. We used to jump out of the barn log with homemade wings and thought we could fly. And every now and then we say, well, I believe I made it that time. We didn't. We just jumped harder. Y'all never done none of that, did you? Amen. You see, uh, we, we had to make up. If we had any toys, we had to come up with them in our own creative little minds. Amen. How high was the barn log? Well, when I got grown, it didn't look that high. But when I was a kid, my God, it was a mountain. It was a mountain. Amen. Boy, you ought to have seen them little arms of floppy. Well, sometimes we even made us a tail. We got to worry about looking at them birds. They had a little tail, so we made it all. But we kept coming down. Why? Because God didn't create me to fly. That's why. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes I wonder, you know, God made a bumblebee. The scientist says it's impossible for a bumblebee to fly because they got them little bitty wings and got that elephant body. But when God made that bumblebee and said fly, that bumblebee didn't look back and say, God, you think this is going to get off the ground? He just well, flopped him with all wings and up went that elephant body and there he went flying because God said he could. Ain't that amazing? Science said he can't. God said you can. Amen. Amen. I don't jump out of one loss anymore. Amen. Why? Because uh, what I got now breaks and don't give. <laughs> Amen. Tuck and roll, tuck and roll. It don't work much anymore. By the time I, I finally get to the tuck part, I've done rolled. <laughs> Amen. 
think about it. There's been so much in our life. Do you, have you ever looked back and wonder how in God's name you made it as far as you did? Uh, amen. Amen. I, I, I've been so, so crazy. I've been on some of the meanest, uh, nastiest horses that you ever seen. I, I thought, boy, that was something. Been thrown, you can tell I've been thrown on my head a few times. Amen. Been thrown and I've had them just rear up and fall backwards and I'd barely get out of their way and the horn would go into, I, I don't know how I'm here today. But God kept me here today. One time I had one fall back five times and Daddy finally said, that's enough, you get off. Amen. I didn't want to look like a chicken, David, you know. Amen. But I was glad to get off. Amen. Glad to get off. I'll never forget my poor mama. I've told y'all. That old horse threw me that day. He was so big I had to jump, grab a hold of the horn and jump up. And I didn't know if mama was cussing me or the horse, but she sure was letting one of us have it. Amen. And she was asking for the shotgun. She said, I'll shoot that. You know what? I'm glad mama got saved. <laughs> but at that time, I was wondering who the you-know-what was she wanted to shoot. <laughs> Amen. She was mad at that horse, and I didn't know. I thought she was mad at me. Amen. But she would have shot him and probably shot me with him with me on him. <clears throat> but we wonder how we got to where we are. You see, God has had a plan for our life. I'm glad I decided to find out what God wanted. Amen. You know, I was talking to my uh, wife there, and we, we, I've come to this conclusion. There's only one reason that God carried me back to the place that where I am. There's only one reason that God kept me and my family where we're at, and that was that I could bring Mama to church, and she could hear me preach, and she could get her soul right with God and be in heaven today. I Amen. believe that in all my Amen. heart of you. Amen. That's the only reason that God put us where we are. And when I've settled that in my heart, boy, Rosie, you're talking about dissolving a lot of other issues I had. Boy, that dissolved a lot of issues when I settled in my heart that God put me there for the purpose. Mama is saved. Mama's in heaven. And glory be to God, there ain't nothing else matters anymore. Nothing else matters. And I'm glad of that. There wasn't a time at the last there when Mama could talk, she'd say, now you baptized me. I said, I did. I did. And I don't know how, how she thought Rosie was Joseph, but she said, Joseph, help me get out. And I, he may have helped her get out of the baptistry. And she remembered all of that. Friend, I remember when she got saved and, and she got up at the altar at the old church and she was a shouting that the Lord had saved her. Mama was the best mama in the world, baby, but she was going to hell unless she got saved. Amen. But she did. She did. Amen. Joanne tried to get her to say something about me, and she'd always say how good I was. That's the only time I thought she was getting close to the line of fibbing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so glad she felt that way about me. I know where she is. Amen. But friend of mine, I'm not going to tell you that God ain't sent some handwritings on the wall in my life. That God hadn't sent some warnings. Amen. That God hadn't spoke very sternly to my heart. He has. About different things in my life. It's easy to have issues. Did you know that? The devil's got a sack full of them. You can just pick what you want. Then God begins to deal with you over your choice. Friends, I'm, sometimes that's not an easy way. But I'm glad God loves me enough to do that. The Bible said without chastisement, we're none of his. I'm glad I'm his because he has chastised me. He said, those that I love, he said, I chastise. You see, friend of mine, I can run till I hang myself. But I'm glad God's got a rain on my heart 
And he kept bringing me back. Bringing me back. Does he do you that way? Belshazzar was killed the same night there. Amen. He was killed. The handwriting on the wall declared that, as the song said, that he'd been weighed in the balance and found only his kingdom was going to be gone. And God made no bones about it, friend of mine. And, and the thing of it was, those uh, that was not, it, when, when you study that, I can't remember the, the language of, but it was not a hard language, but the, they, they couldn't understand it. It was not something they shouldn't have been able to understand. But they couldn't interpret it because God wanted Daniel to do it. God wanted Daniel to do it. Have you been confused? I'm going to close in a minute. I'm just going to have to. Amen. Uh, and I know I've been droopy tonight. But, but I, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. You know, have you been confused in your life? Y'all get a song. Have, 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 has the devil brought things in your life and, and, and there you are, you're, you're so, you just don't know which way to turn? Well, there's a God in heaven that knows what you need today. Amen. Amen. You know, when, when Daniel was going to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar asked him, said, can you interpret this? He said, there's a God in heaven that knows all things. God can do it, he said. You know, sometimes we waste our time talking to the wrong people when we should be talking to God. Sometimes we make phone calls when we should be making knee calls. Amen. We should be talking to God. There's a handwriting on our wall, then we need to find out what God is speaking to us today. I thought about this question. How would you weigh out in God's balances today? How would you weigh out? Would you be found wanting? Or would everything be even? Are you well balanced with in God's favor? How would you weigh out? God's balance today. Hmm. Don't you think you really ought to know? Somebody said, I'd rather not know. No, don't you think you really ought to know? You see, now you've got time to fix your problem. Belshazzar had no time to fix his problem. But today, God's given you time to fix your problem. Don't you think you really ought to know how you weigh out in God's balances today? Amen. I believe that whatever God says, your heart will interpret it if you'll just listen. I believe the Spirit of God inside of you will interpret it what God is speaking to you if you'll just listen. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But if I go, he said, I'll send him and then he began to give a whole list of things that the Spirit was going to do for you. He's here. What do you need him to do? What do you need him to do in your heart tonight? Go ahead and sing. Would you bow your hand? Be sure you're safe to find you out. Do you need to pray? How will you weigh out in God's balances? You're safe to find you out. It says so with the word. Would you come? I don't have no certain phrase or paragraph or word to say. It's just a simple invitation. Is it going to take a handwriting on the wall of your heart to wake you up? God speaking to you, would you come? Lord, I thank you for this night. We realize tonight, God, that there is no power greater than you. We realize tonight, God, that your arms are outstretched and your spirit bids us to come, but Lord, you won't make us. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. We can take it or leave it. 
For I love you for sending it, God. And I love you for giving an opportunity. For making it possible here tonight. And I ask you, God, that every heart would find satisfaction. That every heart would be found at the center of thy will. It's a serious thing, the handwriting on the wall. Oh, God, we didn't even scratch the surface of all that it reveals. God, let us consider that in our own life. We ask you tonight, God, that we've not been a stumbling block. We've not been a hindrance. But God, we've tried to be a help tonight. When we leave this place tonight, I pray that our heart has been made glad. We love you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be sure your sins will find you. I know I've been slow and draggy, but are you glad you come tonight? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise for what he's done. There's a whole lot of history there when you go back and you start in the book of Daniel. Daniel and Revelation run uh, together. Do you understand? You, you'll never understand Revelation until you uh, understand Daniel. And all the things that Daniel saw and, and God showed Daniel as they played out and brought us to where we are today. Amen. Isn't it amazing what God has done? Uh, there was a time that people couldn't understand all the things that been revealed to us today, but we can because we see these things coming to pass. Did you know that Daniel prophesied of people that wasn't even in the existence? They, there was no knowledge of these people when God told Daniel to prophesy what was going to happen. But see, God knew who they was. God knew. Isn't that amazing? Amen. God has showed us so much in his precious word today. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm happy that I'm saved. Amen. 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 On my way to heaven. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Appreciate Jake singing for us with us tonight, don't you? Amen. Appreciate these guys playing. So, and every song. Let's give them all a big hand tonight. And then we got the old little, this little light of mine. Ain't you glad he played tonight? Give him my hand. Amen. I tell you, uh, uh, kids that uh, want to do something for the Lord, you don't have to ask them very often. They'll, they'll just jump up and do it, won't they? All right. Announcements. Let's pray for all these that was mentioned this morning. Battling cancer and other things today. There's people that has asked for prayer that's got problems in their home and uh, we'd like to pray uh, about it. I told them we would and uh, so let's do pray about the things that's going on and pray for the bereaved hearts and pray for the churches up and down the road and uh, pray for that what's going on there at Roper and uh, uh, the many cases that they found uh, of what I've heard, I, I don't know, I've just heard someone say that uh, about the things that's happening to so many people and um, the virus is not going away. It's just not. You just got to learn how to uh, try to take care of yourself to the best of your ability and uh, trust in the Lord. That's all we can do. Either that or dig your hole and stay in it. Uh, but even at that, if, you, if you're like me, you'd probably find some dirt that's got some kind of uh, poison in it that would eat me up while I'm there. I don't know. Amen. Or I'd get in an ant bed. My luck would be an ant bed, right? <laughs> All right. Anyone? Give the Lord praise. Mary Ann called me at the end of this afternoon. Mary Ann seen it, and she said that she loves everybody and wanted everybody to pray for her. She's having to go have her legs wrapped about once a week. That's about the sound of she has. God help her. Amen. She lives in Tom Hill also now, so she's a, 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 a little far away, but she still comes to church when she can, and I appreciate that, don't you? Amen. Sure. I appreciate Connie. She's uh, come Can back and been with us. I want to say that I love the Lord, 
and thank y'all for letting me come and being with y'all. Y'all are some more like my family than ever. We love you. Appreciate you. Y'all glad Connie's coming. Amen. 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 She just prayed up when she got here because I was driving. <laughs> and I didn't have Joanne. And I was like, don't you see that? Don't you see that bright light? The blinker's on. The blinker's on. Oh, it's a wonder man. this here ain't plumbed down to my toe. Amen. Amen. We got to go to Alabama when we get through here. So you pray for us a safe trip down there and back as we carry Jake home. We're going to miss him. Watch uh, your ponies. Huh? I'm going to watch them. I, I, I know when I get to Galesville, slow down to 35. Okay. I learned that the hard way. It cost me $200, but I learned it, and I ain't never worried about that again. Amen. And then when you get on down to Center, Gro uh, Center uh, whatever that is down there, Cedar Bluff, Cedar Bluff. Cedar Bluff. Uh, I, I also learned that uh, you got to get down when it says 30, you don't go down through that 50. But all them other people do. But I, you know, they'll get behind me like they're going to push me. And I'll look up and I'll say, you idiot, if you want to go around, there's another side of the road. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Amen. So uh, we had four, four grandkids all weekend. And uh, I'm proud of every one of them. We never had the first disagreement. We never had the first fuss or, or, or none of that stuff. I, I tell you what, you say, you are not bragging on them. Well, I'm bragging on them today because God knows I may never get to brag on them again. Amen. But I, I, we, they, they were mighty fine, and we appreciate them, every one of well, them. Well, it's going to have to leave them there because it don't work that way at home. That's what, I, that's what I said. Huh? Why can't they do that at the house? You've got to bribe them so much. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you why they can't do that at the house. It's because they were staying with me, but y'all carry them home and see if you can't get them to do it at your house. <laughs> I love them all. Right? Now, some of them are a little puny, uh, amen, but they, they just, we've had a big time. And Joanne said, I've done real good. I, I thought I was doing good. I, I mowed the yard. I, I, I bush all the garden. I, I, I done everything I could to stay out of the house. I'm doing good. <laughs> amen. But I love them all. May the Lord bless you. All right.